Okay, another review, uh, the laziest form of content creation, but a few weeks ago I was contacted by Drunk Deer and with a name like that I had to know more about the keyboard. Apparently Drunk Deer is a registered trademark, which is a bit uncommon for a new niche keyboard company. So I did a little digging and found out that it is registered to a, a Foshan Ruig International Trading Co that also owns a multitude of other interesting names like uh, Pet Poem, Peach Pet, Mango Moon, which is about condoms, breast pumps, feeding bottles, our Drunk Dia that covers computers, smartphones, smartwatches, baby monitors and computer peripherals and many many more. If the keyboard is good it doesn't matter who makes it but it certainly is part of a wider business plan. Uh, it's not your average uh, design by enthusiast for enthusiasts uh, product. Uh, I don't want to speculate any further on this, but yeah, it's weird. And it gets even weirder if you think that only a few months ago I was contacted by Halfboard uh, about the H1 uh, Hera. The keyboard shares quite a few similarities. I asked the guys at uh, Drunk Deer and they say that they have nothing to do with the H1 Hera, so I guess it's just coincidence. I don't know, my spider sense is tickling. But let's go back to the keyboard. Uh, before opening the box, I need to explain this uh, bottle of booze. On Discord someone suggested that uh, the perfect beverage for this keyboard would be Jägermeister uh, because of the Dia, of course. Uh, I couldn't agree more, so to spice up the review I'm gonna take a sip every time I say something bad about this keyboard. And since I've already expressed my concerns about the company, I'll start the counter right now. Mm, it's strong. Okay, very low effort packaging design with these two red-blue curves representing the north-south poles of a magnet. Uh, in fact, the whole point of this keyboard is that it features magnetic switches. Uh, it's nothing new, all effect switches exist since the 70s, but very few keyboards nowadays mount uh, this kind of switches, so I was very happy to review this unit. Now, the funny thing is that uh, the name of the keyboard is nowhere to be found on the box. Uh, Drunk Deer is the company name, M75 is the series, but they forgot to write the name of the keyboard, which is A75. There, fix it for you. Also, they went all the trouble to register the trademark, but they put the little R in the wrong place. Here it is, better. And so I guess I need to take a sip. Inside we find a very low quality packaging solution with very little respect for the environment, random pieces of foam, finally our keyboard protected by a dust cover, more foam, the manual, uh, the USB cable, it is brighted and uh, with an adapter from USB-C to A. Three additional keycaps, 
a key puller. So very standard 75% layout with a rotary encoder. I started testing the A75 and the left control was defective. Very scratchy and noisy. It's hard to show you in video, but this is how it sounds. I contacted Drunk Deer again and they sent me a new A75. Oh, by the way, you have a cool name like Drunk Deer and then your first product is called A75? I mean, go wild! Oh well, whatever. I got a drink again, I guess. Anyway, one week later I received a white Drunk Deer. Fortunately, this one has no issues, but this misadventure outlined a problem they have with quality control. Could be just my usual bad luck, of course, but still, I think I'll drink one more and move on. The keyboard looks good overall and feels pretty solid, even though it's all plastic, except for the switch plate. Uh, I don't see any screws. So to open it, I believe I'll need to pry on the seams. Mm, of course, we are going to dismantle the A75, but before doing that, let's proceed to the sound test. Well, the A75 doesn't sound too bad, but to get a better uh, sense of the quality of this keyboard, uh, let's replace the stock keycaps with something better, and of course, what's better than uh, MT3 device terminal. Uh, so, these keycaps are okay, I guess, they are shine through, but uh, a little on the thin side, they are about one millimeter thickness and so hopefully we can get a better sound profile with MT3. Considering this is a plastic keyboard, it doesn't sound too bad, but it has some concerning noise and keystrokes uh, reverb a little too much for my liking. Also, the stock spacebar is really bad, while it's okay with MT3 keycaps, so at least we know that the stabilizers uh, are fine. The real revelation here is the switch. Uh, the magnetic switches are very nice, linear and butter smooth. It's not just marketing BS. If you like linear switches, these are the smoothest I've tried. The problem is that the keyboard has very inconsistent sound profile. Uh, while some keys sound just right, many are very pingy and the overall typing experience is not great if you give value to the sound like I do. Now let me show you. So I recorded the sound of two switches. Uh, the first one is a bit noisy, the second is almost perfect. The first block is the key press, the second is the release and the third is the sound of the switch uh, reverberating inside the keyboard. We don't care about the sound of the switch itself, 
but all the additional noise that it generates after it is pressed. So uh, I will examine only the third block. What really matters are the little spikes. Uh, if I enhance the noisy switch, you see that uh, the line is jacked and that is what makes the switch ping. On the right, the wave doesn't show any jackness or any way it is acceptable. Now listen to the difference of the two blocks. It is clear to me that the switch itself has great potential, but the A75 doesn't do a great job at keeping the switches uh, nice and sturdy, and the result is a not uniform sound profile. It is true that the problem is exacerbated if you are heavy-handed, so if you type with a light touch or if you set the actuation point very high, it shouldn't be a problem, but still, I find it very frustrating because the switch itself could give so much more than the A75 is showing us. So what's so cool about this switch anyway? The answer is simplicity. Here on the left I have a magnetic switch and on the right a standard Cherry MX Black that as you know is a linear switch, so very simple. First of all, the stem. On the magnetic switch all we need is a magnet inside, but apart from that it can be just plain straight. Uh, on the Cherry MX instead we have a special shape because uh, we have a, like a lever that it is going to push on the metal leaves. Then we have the top housing and the springs that are basically the same. And then on the Cherry MX we need two metal leaves with the pin that is soldered on the PCB. When the key is pressed the two parts make contact and the key is activated. On the magnetic switch we don't need that complication, there are no pins or additional metal parts. The switch doesn't activate anything by itself, but it is the controller on the PCB that detects the variance generated by the magnetic field to tell when the key is pressed. The A75 comes with 8 pre-configured actuation points from 0.4mm to 3.6mm. The very high actuations can be useful for gaming, but I find that for typing starting from the 4th to the 8th preset, they don't make much of a difference. Yes, the actuation point changes, but after a certain threshold you have to bottom down anyway. The drawback of this design is that the whole effect sensor is so sensitive that it is influenced by the smallest difference in uh, magnetism. And since no magnet is identical to another, you technically cannot just swap switches randomly. If you remove one, you have to put it back exactly where it was. To be able to change switches, we need a calibration tool that at this time is not available from Drunk Deer. The other problem, of course, is that the keyboard gets interference from any magnetic source, so you better keep any magnet far from your desktop. Before drawing my conclusions, let's see what's inside a drunk deer. To open the keyboard, you need to pry between the seams with an old credit card or a plastic tool, and after a little fiddling, the bottom should pop out. We notice that under one of the folding feet there's room for a wireless receiver, so maybe they plan on releasing a Bluetooth version also. Under the hood there is a very thin and frankly useless sheet of foam that reveals the PCB in all its simplicity. Very clean design with no flux residue and looking carefully we can see that they are definitely thinking about a wireless version. We have the antenna and the pins for the Bluetooth module, uh, an on-off switch and a battery connector on the top part. 
To see on the other side, we need to undo a few screws that hold directly on the aluminum uh, switch plate. Again, the PCB job is very clean and looks well executed. The top side seems coated with some kind of resin. Uh, that is something I've already seen in Hall Effect keyboards and we can see lubricant residue under the stabilizers so we know that at least those are lubed. The PCB already supports the ISO layout so we might also see that in the future. Nothing much to see here. I really like the cleanness of whole effect PCB and now I kinda want to build one myself. Between the PCB and the top plate we have a thick piece of foam. This one seems of a better quality compared to the previous one but unfortunately it doesn't help much with the pinginess. Some lubricant leaked on the top of the plate, but yeah, nothing to worry about. Yeah, overall it's a clean job. Unfortunately, they didn't spend enough time testing the switch plate. Maybe a different material or a better aluminum alloy would have granted a better sound. Let's put this thing back together and go to the conclusions. Damn, I'm so angry at Drunk Dia right now, this could have been such a great keyboard and instead they didn't spend 5 minutes testing the product. <sighs> So this is a $140 keyboard, if you pre-order you get a 30% discount bringing the price to about $100. If you decide to trust the company, of course the keyboard is worth $100, bucks. but do you really want to risk it when there are other well-established companies that offer arguably a better product? The merit of the A75 is that it tries to bring the whole effect switch to the masses and I can't thank them enough for that. Uh, magnetic switches are so simple and durable and smooth and we really need to see more keyboards uh, featuring them. What else? Uh, I haven't talked about the Drunk Deer software. It's not available right now and so at the moment you cannot customize the, the keyboard in any way. But honestly that doesn't change anything. It could be the cherry on top of a good keyboard but this is meh. So you are not adding much value. So if you are a gamer and all you want is a super fast switch and don't care about the typing experience well yeah this might work for you otherwise i hope i tickled your curiosity enough to check the market for other whole effect keyboards and give the magic of magnetism a chance that's all for today uh, stay tuned because i had enough about reviewing others keyboard and the next videos will be about making cool stuff and of course the release of the empty new profile so yeah stay tuned ciao